Hey guys, welcome to Retail Rescue, survival strategies for the brick and mortar pro shop. Sponsored by Easy B Sites, I'm Aaron and Inside Archery. Stay tuned for this week's tip of the week. My name's Aaron and today we're going to talk about a little bit about the big box store. It used to be, oh they're the enemy and all that and I know a lot of the stuff that they can do will drive you crazy but I, I want to just touch on a few things that they do have that we can steal from them literally. Um, Big items, really, really hard. Uh, just a few years ago, there was two hard case manufacturers out there in the $50, $60 price range. And at the show, I'd go back and forth from one to the other. And whoever had the better freight deal, that's the hard case that you have to have a hard case in your store. $40, $50 item. The trouble was one of them bought the other, which is good for them and, and kind of... Put that fight to, to bed but my battle was to get that case in here so one I could sell it and make a profit because you have to have that piece in your store but two making it profitable was was just impossible without looking like an idiot honestly so on uh, this one particular bow case my cost as a buying group member was 3850 something 3857 I think on the case okay and now we have to buy freight. There's no longer a free freight if you buy so many on this item. So you're going to add eight to ten dollars on each one of those for freight. I've got forty-eight dollars into this bow case that is supposed to sell for fifty dollars or sixty dollars, and there's just no room. You have to have it. So I explored soft cases. I explored higher dollar cases, getting into some SKBs. You can do that, but you're missing that market. So. Drives, drives me crazy. This one might have you scratching your chin a little bit, but I, I walked into Walmart's and here is that bow case that I do not have in my store. They're selling it for $29.99. How, how can they do that? Oh, it used to infuriate me. Well, the next year, so I didn't have it. The next year I went to the show and I went to those guys and I said, I, I can't stock your product. They are selling it for way less than I can buy it for. And, and it's business. Their response was, well, if you buy 10 truckloads, we can give you that, that price as well. And of course, I can't buy 10 truckloads. Um, you can go in with other shops if you're friends with those guys and split the order, but it's just not possible. So I turned it around on them just a little bit. I walked into Walmart's. Here's a big pallet full of those bow cases for $29.99. I called the cashier, the, the clerk over, and I said, can you give me an inventory on this item? And he looks, there's, well, there's a pile. That was his answer. I said, no, I need a number. And he went, doot, doot, doot. And he looked it up in his little thing. And he says, I got 27 of them. I said, I'll take them. And he will, what? I said, yeah, I'll, I'll take them. I called two guys with pickup trucks. I said, meet me at the curb of Walmart right now. I bought them all out at $29.99, which is already $10 less than my cost with no freight. That's where these guys, they buy in huge volumes. They have their own trucks to move them, so they're not even paying freight. I bought them all. I got them at a good price. But what's more is they didn't have that piece anymore. I cleaned them out. So now I'm the only one, and I was in a little bit of a rural town. You may have 10 guys, and maybe this won't work for you. But I just want you to think about this for a second. and let, Instead of letting that drive you crazy, be proactive. I had a, a pile of those bow cases, but I'm the only one in my town that now has that bow case. I bought them all out. Of course, they reordered. About three or four weeks later, I went in there and there's another pallet. But now they're on sale even at $24.99. Yep, guess what? I called the guy over, got it, I'll take them. It was like 36 of them this time. So I've got 50 or 60 of these bow cases and I'm able to sell them at 50 bucks. I think I was actually getting $54.99 for them or something. That's a lot of inventory, but you know what? I sold every single one of those by Christmas. This was in, in August, late summer or so, when they put them on sale. I'm the only guy in the town with them. I'm doubling my money on them, and Walmart's happy. They made their money, but um, I, I literally stole them from them at a better cost. That's a problem with this industry that I think we really need to focus on um, can I blame the manufacturers? Yeah, I really do. You know, um, we're a manufacturer ourselves. If somebody calls and orders a hundred thousand of them, am I going to give them a better deal? You probably have to give them something, but you can't make it so that everybody else can't sell that product. So anyways, I learned how to beat the game. You can do this with 
tree stands, ground blinds, big items that you just, you can't buy a pallet full. I understand it. And you can't pay freight, crazy freight for UPS on each of these items. So think about that. Next time you're walking the aisle, don't let it drive you crazy. Clean them out and steal their inventory and uh, make some money in the process. But big box stores have that ability. They have a lot of things going for them that you can look and analyze and take to your store. One thing I want to point out right quick is your store layout. Uh, I've been back and forth with this one a couple of times, undecided. I had a pretty good size showroom, but in any big store like that, they have a directory on the aisle, head of the aisle. What's going to be, what are you going to find in that aisle? And guys, most of the time, grocery store especially, if she sends me in for a loaf of bread, a, a can of mayo, and a, and a, and a chicken celery soup, I want to get what I need and get out of there. That's not a store that I like to hang out in. But in a bow hunting store, it's not a bad thing and you're not going to get lost. So I chose not to put a directory on my aisles of where they're going to find stuff. I prefer to let them wander around and search for it. Um, and they'll figure out your store after a little while. They know where to go for what they need. But obviously there's no secret on why the convenience store puts the gallon of milk at the back of the store. They want you to walk by the Fritos, grab some of those, and what? Oh, Coke on sale, grab some of those, pretty soon you need a basket, that's how that works. Moving your traffic through your store to what it is they want to see, the obvious, if you got something that you want them to see and you want them to buy it, you put it right up in the front, but working those travel patterns, how they move around your store is essential, watch that. Put stuff where you want them to bump into it. Cross marketing, of course, in the grocery store right next to the graham crackers, they're hanging a bag of marshmallows right there to think, I want to make some s'mores. And then all of a sudden you're grabbing a chocolate. Wherever your tree stand display is, hang a couple scouting cameras in that area. They're in that mindset. They're going to the woods to hang their stands. Have cross displays set up that add on to those sales. So that's, that's a really good thing that they do. Target, $70 million a year store. For those that shop at Target, I pretty much know where to go when I go in that store to get what I need. They have just started a campaign city by city by city. They're completely remodeling that entire store. You would think they're making $70 million a year that they've got it going on and you wouldn't touch that model. They know they want to disrupt that traffic. They want you to wander that store a little bit. They've been watching, analyzing your movements as you shop Target and they want to move their store. So they have rebuilt and remodeled. They're going store by store across the country. Huge. Pay attention to these guys. It's not just sporting goods stores that we need to be paying attention to. It's all the other stores. When I go into my neighborhood hardware store, they're all wearing schmocks. Matching red schmocks. Um, you might be wearing a white shirt. You might be wearing... But having that uniform, I'm not saying a geeky Walmart blue jacket but something that distinguishes your employees from the rest of the guys. So if I have a question, I can look around the room and I can find somebody in that uniform that has the answer to my question. I think that is crucial to distinguish your employees from the other customers. And I want to touch on real quick the groupies. In every pro shop you go into, there's a handful of guys that hang out, drink coffee, tell stories. There's nothing more frustrating, and I've heard this from all kinds of bow hunting consumers everywhere. They don't care about my needs. They're just hanging out with their cronies and their buddies. I had a rule. I had a shooting staff. I had volunteer guys that helped me run my store. But if you're behind my counter, you're helping my customers. If you're working out, doing your own, if you're drinking coffee, then you're out of that area to distinguish that. There's nothing worse than ignoring a customer because they're they're telling their own bow hunting stories, their, their little crew, their little niche. I, I know everybody's got that. Separate that from your business. Identify your employees with smocks, uniforms, even if it's all the same color hat. It can be a red Hoyt hat or something. Everybody, look for the guys with the red hats. They have the questions. The big box stores have got a, a uncustom, polished, procedure when you walk through that you know what you're going to expect you know the bathrooms are probably going to be clean you know they're going to smell right there's a family atmosphere it, it's not the custom good old boy pro shop that you have and that's what we're going to keep focusing on and magnifying but what they do have is 
a security. When the consumer walks into, into any target in the country, you know what you're about to experience as far as customer service and selection and cleanliness and sizes and inventory spread. It, it only goes so far, but it, it does a very good job at what they're doing. So look at what it is that they have. What is their attractant? And you can use that to your advantage. I'm Aaron for Retail Rescue, and we'll see you next week.